Okay, now you've installed uh, Chrome and you've got the Chrome app extension added on as well. You need to open the Chrome extension and then you need to connect up your receiver for programming. Now I'm using this and whatever it is, I don't know, FTDI. It's just a generic FTDI with a load of spaghetti pins on it. And uh, you connect them up as per the diagram that I'm going to provide in the tutorial. You should see it, well, now probably. Right, now, once they're all connected up properly, you need to bear in mind that transmitter on your FTDI needs to go to receive on your receiver and TX on your receiver needs to go to RX on your FTDI. You may find this needs to be swapped around depending upon how they've been labelled on the FTDI. But again, give it a try. If it doesn't work, flip them too. If it still doesn't work, then you've got bigger problems. Right, so next thing, plug it in. Computer recognises that it's plugged in. Okay, verify the COM port, COM4. Rather than clicking connect up here, you need to click on firmware flasher. Now, on the board here, I'm using the orange cheapo HK Hobby King jobbies, so I need to select receiver. I now need to scroll down the list until I find Hobby King Orange RX UHF. Now you're probably going to want to tick the race EEPROM. I'm going to uncheck that because I've already got a load of settings saved in there. And we're going to go flash firmware. Right, we now get a load of messages on here. Chip recognised is at Mega 328P, writing to flash, verifying flash. Programming successful, serial port successfully closed. And that is it. You see you have a red light on here. Job done. Now what we'll do is unplug our USB, disconnect our pins, and then that's that done. The next stage is to program your transmitter. Okay, next we're going to program the flash the uh, 100 milliwatt transmit. Now the 1 watt is very similar, it's just the pin order is slightly different I believe. So again I'll put the, uh, the diagram up for the 1 watt and the 100 milliwatt. Right, so I've connected my programmer up again. The metal plate is pretty much just a bracket so I can have my antenna come out the side rather than out the back and using a 90 degree connector and the metal should hopefully act as a RF ground plane but I'm not 100% convinced about that but it seems to work alright okay so the procedure is a lot like the receiver except with the 100 milliwatt and this particularly with the uh, 1 watt module the power that can be put out from your USB port is not sufficient to power the unit so it will keep resetting itself and you won't be able to get it to connect. To get around that you plug the unit into the back of your transmitter and let that power that while you're transmitting. But before you do that you want to make sure that your voltage connector, this one here, isn't connected. And while I'm on voltage connectors, a word of warning, make sure, 100% sure, that you never connect 5 volts to your program and header. Only ever 3.3 volts, otherwise you can blow up the RF unit or the chip.
I think the chip's 5 volts, but the RF unit on the back, that little fella there, is um, only 3, volt, 3 volt tolerant. So, once we've done that, we can now connect it. The same applies for the receiver, by the way. You must also make sure that that doesn't have 5 volts connected to it. If you're not sure what your programmer is putting out, I suggest you power it via your transmitter or with the receiver that you power it via an ESC onto the servo plugs. Or you can do what I've done and uh, take a servo lead and bodge it onto a USB lead and then power it via the USB for 5 volts there. Right, so let's carry on. I'm going to plug this into the back of the transmitter. Okay, so as you see, the RF module is dropped in there nicely. Next step is to plug in the USB. We want to make sure this metal bit doesn't short anything out while we're doing it. Could ideally do with my USB extension lead. That's one walkies, so I won't be using that. Right, in it goes. Now it still won't connect because it's not powered up. So now we turn on the transmitter. Next step is to connect in the firmware flasher. No, we don't connect, sorry. We go to firmware flasher again, like we did before. Uncheck, well, I'm going to uncheck erase EEPROM, but you probably want to have it checked. And then we select transmitter module. We select our board, which is the Hobby King UHF TX, not the RX as TX. You want UHF TX and now we hit flash firmware so it's connected to the board writing to flash verifying flash programming successful and serial port successfully closed right we now select leave firmware flasher and now we click connect so, right there we go now in here this is where you set up your um, channels that you want to run on choose something choose your operating frequency and then choose your maximum limits over on the right hand side you can set your data rate the lower, in general, the lower, the less resolution you get, but the signal is more robust. Uh, select your your channel configuration, and then I tend to hit randomize to choose the channels, and then hit save to EEPROM. At the minute, it's just loading up the channels that I have already. Once that's done, hit disconnect. Turn off your transmitter and unplug your USB FTDI. You've now successfully flashed your transmitter and your receiver. The next stage is to bind the two together.
Okay, now we're going to show you how to bind. Take your servo lead, plug it into your any one of these to power your receiver. Signal is towards the inside of the board. Signal's on this side, ground's on the outside, five volts down the middle there. I'm going to use my handy dandy USB lead, but that's one side. The unit's now installed in my 9XR. Right, what we have to do is press and hold the button on the back here, turn it on, wait for the sounds. When you hear the first beep, release the button and it will start chirping. This means it's in bind mode. Now, plug in your receiver. Beeping stops and you get two red lights on there. Two pair of red lights on here. Now we disconnect. Now we turn off our receiver, our transmitter, sorry. Now we can turn it back on like we would normally. And now we can power up our model. And we're bound. Now the nice thing about OpenLRS is it sends telemetry information from this, it transmits as well as receives, back to your radio and you get a series of beeps to indicate your signal strength. Now it's going to be hard for me to test it in here but when you lose your link we'll get a beep. Now that is like our dead tone. Up to that point you'll get various chirps. But when you power it back up, assume I've plugged it in the right hole. You get rebind. Um, very nice. Another word of advice. You notice all the way through my program and I left the stock dipoles on the receiver and transmitter. This is because they both transmit and like with your FPV transmitter, you can burn up the, the RF chip by not allowing the full power out of the antenna. So always leave your antenna connected as best, best practice. The same applies with like when powering it up at any time, ensure it's always on. Okay. To get the most out of your open LRS, you're going to need a good set of antennas. Now, most people fly with a Diamond SRH771 antenna. These are about 20 quid from uh, most RC shops. RMRC sells them. Uh, uh, Firstpersonview.co.uk is where I got this one from. It works very well. I use it with my 1 watt module. And uh, we've tested it out to 6K. So 6K on a dipole. Brilliant. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to try is making your own dipoles for your plane or perhaps a turnstile this one's laid flat on a wing I use it in my FPV 39 wing uh, what else? the other one is my uh, bodged up Moxon rectangle this is really what you want for the 100 milliwatts I've seen uh, Jace from I Love To Fly FPV uh, YouTube channel fly 20 kilometers to zero on a Moxon similar to this. Well, obviously he built his, he's made that look a little nicer. But on the 100 milliwatts, 20K, and that's at low level. So it can be done. You don't need masses of power if you use the right antennas. The only problem with this is it's directional. It's got about 120 degree beam width. So 120 there, 120 there. And the back of the antenna, there is nothing. So it's worth bearing in mind. I personally have flown it to about 2k on the 100 milliwatts but yeah it works but you've got to make sure you point it at it the other thing you're going to want to build is dipoles for your plane or similar to this basically you have an active element and then the bottom one is usually flexible i should have a dipole around here somewhere oh, one, I, one i broke in a recent crash you normally have the active element sticking out the top and then a nice flexible ground plane underneath with this, you need to use your dipole, your SRH antenna, in the same 
polarization. So you don't want, if this is vertical on your plane, you won't be holding this up vertical. You don't want to be holding it flat. Same, if this is flat, you don't want to be holding this vertical. And never point the tip of your antenna at your plane. Otherwise you'll be flying in a null where there's no signal. So these are all things to bear in mind. And apart from that, have fun. I hope the video helped. Blech.